previously.
Hey everybody, and welcome back to Terraria. When we last left off, we beat some bosses, the Enraged Plantera and Enraged Duke Fishron. And we did that with no armor, because we are the best. So we're going to stick with the Dragon Armor, which I'm going to point out, I think it's before. Still has damage bonuses, and is, in my opinion, the best all-around armor for a melee character in the game. Also, I removed all my vanity items. You know, I'd occasionally switch across the... Um, Fish and rod and stuff? Nah, don't need them. Uh, okay, so. Episode 650. Now, I normally do something special every 50 episodes or every 100 episodes. And that is true for today. But you see, today is the final episode of Terraria. So, we're going to end this with a nice long look at where we came from, what we accomplished, what are we going to do next. So I guess the first thing to we should look at I guess is, is our base. This is where we have lived for the longest time. Hundreds and hundreds of episodes. It has grown over time to be much bigger and much greater than it ever was. I mean, I believe here somewhere there was originally a tall tree. And this, which originally was like three deep, eventually grew to be more, and then more, and then more. I've got the escape tunnel and the treasure down there. The traps that we can turn on, but I'd probably kill Walter if he comes wandering out his house. This is originally where all of our crafting would get done. And then I think we moved it across into here. And over here. And then we would be like, you know, we have so many crafting machines. Let's make our very own crafting building. Which is what we did. And then we never ever use it. Because there's nothing left for us to craft. We have like every possible piece of machinery in here. And this again was like our final extension that we ever made to this base. Go over here and it just takes us to the elevator area. And back across. And then this is the area that I made for all of the NPCs. And I planned ahead to have a room for everybody. And you'll see there is a room for every single NPC. Including ones that went in the game. But I knew they would come out in the update. The one thing I never did was personalize everyone's room. I mean, I kind of did look like the Dryad's got living wood and Pytagel's got pink stuff and Ness's got glass and whatever. Uh, it was never hugely personalized. But this is what it was. And up at the top, uh, before we had the ability to fly with our rocket boots, flying up and over was... We couldn't make it. Our rocket boots wouldn't carry us that far. So I built this wonderful contraption. So as we walk in, a floor appears. And as we walk out, the floor disappears. And of course, we need that floor to be there. Otherwise, their houses aren't classed as houses. Like, if I do this, this is no longer a house for them for some reason. I don't know why it would it wear like that, but it did. And of course, a little garden. The fountain being the newer addition here. And the pumpkins growing in over Halloween. I've always been, I've always liked this place. It's always been great. And like I said, we came from humble beginnings. It was just originally a wooden shack. And speaking of wood, we have our wooden suggestion board right here. I have to do this, but it's not going to work. It never works. Oh, it finally worked. They always tried to leave, right? So I pulled the lever. A suggestion board, which is now empty apart from... Emil Sivjes, whose quest I'm never going to be able to complete because we don't get a freaking blood moon and we never get the right pieces of George's to exceed us. So who knows? My one failure. Right, so I guess... Um, oh, and also uh, more traps, staircases, and then just chests of stuff that we ran out of places to put. I, and I guess I could put them on like the top row of here, but I mean, there's absolutely zero point in doing that now. And this one here. So I think the first thing we should do is go ahead and take a look at 
Uh, the original special thing, episode 100. What did I do for episode 100, the very first special episode that we did? It was I built this party house. With rockets and a disco and a bubble machine. And I believe if this is still rigged up, it should bring in all of the people from our base. There is a still a countdown on it. So we all were here celebrating Party Girl. Actually, the sty oh no, the stylist never got to appreciate this. I don't know if the Party Girl did. I don't think the Party Girl was here. Also, who are you? You the stylist? Yeah, you're the, sty you're the stylist. Party Girl and stylist were never here when this episode 100 originally began. Shut up, Izzy. I'm trying to do the lever. So, you know, we've got... I don't know what this is over here. Uh, but we've got, like, a drink keg, got glasses, got some jello, green and red. Got multiple torches everywhere. These are using my precious, precious gems way back when. Rainbow bricks took me so long to farm for this. Got the disco balls, and we got, oh, so good. And fireworks on the roof, which I believe are still rigged up and should work if I pull this lever here. Oh, wonderful. I love it. This this is episode 100 right here. Look how far my ability to build has come on. This place looks like trash. <laughs> so speaking of building, let's go and look at our very first let's build. A let's build that was so early, it wasn't even called a let's build because I hadn't even considered that being a thing yet. So before I go to it, you know, have a think, what could it be? What is my very first let's build? Well, I'll tell you. My very first let's build was, in fact, cloud storage. Up here on the cloud, we have the place where I store all of my Halloween outfits. Look at all of these. And then a lot of the Halloween-based stuff is in this chest, too. If I can find my case, there it is. Bonus outfits, we've got like a spooky bat hook, we've got some rotten eggs, we've got some Halloween paintings. Got like cloudy background. Blue dungeon bricks took me ages to get as well because we had to go to find a blue dungeon. I, I think I miscounted this whole thing as being one brick. Because there is a centre and I think I preferred it without a centre so that a chest could have gone in the middle. Yeah. How we've learned, how times have come on. So this was, I believe, like in the same style as my Let's Builds, with like a musical interlude and a fast forward and stuff. But I think I talked over most of it. That's something I actually dropped in later Let's Builds. Uh, I would give you like a brief rundown at the beginning of what I plan and any problems I had. Whereas originally, I would narrate over the entire thing, telling you what was going on and going from my head as we went through. I think I prefer the later versions of how everything is with the uh, just just watching it and just listening to the music as time goes by. So that's our first let's build, but what was our very first official let's build? Hmm, I think... I think it was our arena, right? But our arena now is so different to what it originally was. I think this is like model 3 or model 4 of our arena. Which should also be covered in dirt, I think. Yeah, let's get rid of this. As we walk along. So this has gone through many, many iterations. Mainly for... Less for boss fights and more for the waves of enemies from the pumpkin moon and the frost moon. Haha. So, yeah, I don't think it... Was it originally filled with lava? I, don't, I remember I used to hide in, like, under here somewhere. I used to hide in a thing there. Uh, but then I found out that the morning woods could still shoot me. So then we moved it up to here, which works far better, 
but you can't see what's going on because the game is so zoomed in. If this was on the Xbox One, PC, or PlayStation 4, it would be a lot more entertaining, this arena. And then, you know, the actuated uh, spear traps didn't actually come into much later. I had several spear traps, but they weren't actuated. It was like every alternating one. It's like it was one row of them, and every alternating one would go off. But now look at that. We have like columns of like eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight columns. So there's always damaging going on. And farming these things oh, took me so long. I don't think I did it on camera as well because it took me so long. And then originally, what I have here, I was also going to do up at the top. However, we got very fortunate with a glitch uh, in the fact that for some reason, these spear traps when they retracted on an actuated block would not retract into the block and instead just keep on going upwards up and up and up so i didn't need more here coming down because there'd be an infinite amount going up the only ones that didn't go up were here because of this block that i was hiding in which is why we have these things uh fun fact about this arena i was originally going to design a pattern but then I realised you couldn't really see it on the map, so it killed it for me. And the pattern was I was going to paint stuff along here. I was going to paint, like, um, pumpkins and um, enemies on this side, and then, like, uh, the frost-looking enemies on this side for the pumpkins and frost moons. And then up here I was going to have uh, a painting of, like, Duke Fishron and Plantera and stuff. Just painted on the wall. But you can't see paint on the map. So when you zoom out to look at it like this, you just wouldn't be able to see it very well. So that kind of, that kind of killed it for me. And then, of course, much, 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 much later, we added the rain stacks, which for some reason I always called rain sticks, which are these things here to turn on all of my traps with the perfect timing, which is not an invention of mine. Uh, in the episode where I built this, I link to the exact video, I believe, or maybe just to the channel of the... Uh, video where I got this from, which is an absolutely fantastic channel. It's uh, been one of my YouTubers of the month. Get out of here, you lot. Right, let's go home. So let's take a look at I, what I believe was the very next let's build, but this next... I wondered what that was, and it's two butterflies. This next let's build, it was very important. Not in terms of what it did for me, but what for what it did for the series as a whole. And that let's build is our pyramid. Right here. So this let's build it, it serves no purpose to us. Like we don't store anything in here, we don't do anything with this, we never even visit here. However, this was the first episode. There's a scorpion out there. Have I ever caught one of these? This was the very first thing that led into End Days. Episode... 150? 100? 200? One, it must be 150, I think, was this. And this was back then I was planning End Days. And this was the original thing. So if you watch the Let's Build a Pyramid video, at the very end, you will see a teaser for End Days so, so early on. So, so early on. With this uh, stargazer-looking thing right here. Oh, the plan. The planning's... And of course, it came in handy later with the wood from Yggdrasil, uh, which is one of the riddles for... The Sanctum. Hey, the Blood Moon is rising. Maybe we can finally buy the Tuxedo. Hey, you. Edward. No, it's just the pants again. Oh, uh, we already have the pants. We need the actual vesty looking item. Let's have a look. Do we have a scorpion? Oh, crap. Yes, we did. We had... One. That's how seemingly rare they are. So speaking of end days, let's take a look at some of the other things that were designed for 
end is. Okay, now my brain is... Come on, brain. What what did I make for end is? Like, that was part of it. That, oh, yes! I remember over here. Actually, I'll take my... Take my... Teleporte. So, uh, the secondary thing, I believe was episode 200, was, if we go up, and maybe across a little bit, I designed these meteors to represent the uh, oncoming doom of the evil spaceship. And we have one of the Halo, we have one of the Crimson, and we have one somewhere of the Corruption. The Corruption being the smallest one, because our world was already corrupted, The crim and also Hallowed, and Crimson being the largest because we had very little Crimson. So if I go to the map, there they are, look. Now these are comprised of Crimson blocks, Hallowed block, Corruption block, but also Meteorite blocks. So these are all Meteorite here. And this also served a dual purpose in that... Uh, meteors will randomly crash into your world and potentially could destroy things and, you know, make your world look a bit crap. However, they won't crash if there's already a set amount of meteorite in the world already. So by having these here as meteorites, it means we never experienced another meteorite crashing in ever again. Also, just by exploring these, you can see how annoying it was trying to build them because you constantly get attacked. Also, it's nighttime, which is very... Very annoying. So this is the th the second thing to sort of lead into end is. Oh, it has now reminded me of something. Oh, inventory's just full of crap. If we go, where's the daisy? Over here, we can see another thing that we built that was very small and ideally, well, pretty much very crap. To, to look at it on the face of it, but it is... Is it really this far away? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, it's something we built, and it's something we very rarely use, but it's something we I feel like we should take a look at. And that is, right here, the impact crater of the first meteor in our world. And you can still see there are some pieces of meteorite still hanging around down here and here and what I did was I built this bridge to prevent the spread of the halo from coming across look I really should wasn't pitch black so we could see what's going on this is a little bridge I built you know I think I think it looks okay as a bridge it's not the worst looking thing I've ever built Although I never did come back and spread grass under here. I always said I was going to put grass uh, grass down here because it's just mud. Just dirt. But whatever. I, I think... I mean, you guys are going to let me know. You guys are going to correct me. But I think the very next thing we built was the Fortress of the Damned. I think this is maybe our second or third let's build. Oh, look at the moon, it looks cool. We built the Fortress of the Damned, and this is a place for me to store my banners, which are originally hanging from these skulls. But it turns out we got too many banners, so I packed them away. And and a place for us to store our trophies. Here. And we now have every single trophy in the game. Slowly expanded as each thing has been added in, and... One of the ones that took the longest, I believe, was the Ice Queen trophy. Like, if I look in the trophy chest, we only have two Ice Queen trophies. But, I mean, look at that. We've got 89 Pumpkin trophies and 82 Morning Wood trophies. Yeah, it really says a lot. And then here was statues. But I was going to do something with statues, and I never did. And then, of course, the banners that we've been collecting. And then the helmets, the heads of the enemies going on mannequins in here. Which was an extension, I believe, to this place. And then beyond that, we added another extension for... Originally, it wasn't these um, cases of animals. I believe it was something else down here. 
I don't know. Was it armor? Was I storing armors down here originally? Maybe. I can't remember. It's been so long. And then, uh, now I think we should visit a place that I'm probably the most proud of, maybe? I don't know. But it's something that I really enjoyed building. It was very, very difficult to build, very, very time-consuming uh, to build and to edit. And there's my underwater base. And this is a place that we actually use and put to good use. This place served as mass storage for so much stuff. The one thing I'm sad about is we never really got... Did I just say someone used a door? Before I used it. Um, I never really got to use these rooms. Now, they're not really good as rooms because of this angular staircase area here. But I'm sad that we never really got to use them. I've got the lanterns. It's so dark under the water. And this place too. So, it was made with blue dungeon brick that I believe we painted orange to give it this rusty look, Bioshock style. Similar to these doors. So many lights hanging around. So many different types of lighting as well. Now, painting this took a long time. And then uh, getting trees and stuff and then putting in the glass background and then getting it all to look good and having this secret area down here. Reminds me a lot of Cro Chrono Trigger, this area here. Um, go back up. And then uh, we had this emergency teleport here. So if our base is ever under attack, we could bring our people to this place. And they could hide underwater with me. Like this, look. Now they're probably going to drop down this hole and die, so I'm going to actually fill that hole in. There we go. And then, of course, above all of this, again, alluding to the Bioshock-style thing, we have the lighthouse. There is always a lighthouse. Now, the one thing... Uh, maybe I mentioned this, but originally this stone here was supposed to be coral. Like, I was going to paint it all, which is why it's also jaggedy. Um, it's going to be like a giant coral-looking area. I never liked how it looked, so I ended up just doing it as stone. It was like jagged rocks. But in my opinion, it's a bit too jaggedy as rocks. But you know what? I think it looks okay if we go to the map. I'm... I'm happy with what we accomplished here. I think it looks fantastic. So, I believe now we should talk about another thing that I planned ahead for having in Endes. And that is... Oh, come on, let's get over there. Down here. Right over here. Uh, and that is Yggdrasil. So I, I, I wanted to have a weld tree, which is what we have here. And this took me so long just to plan, by the way. I, I think I still have... A lot of my notes and original drawings about how things I want things to look. Maybe I'll upload those at some point. But this is mostly supposed to look kind of like a bonsai tree. Now looking back at it, there's a lot about this that I don't like the look of. But it is the biggest, or the tallest, build I have ever done. And it is several blocks thick. So it's not just like a thin little thing. And then, of course, you know, I added grass and stuff, and trees on trees. I wanted it to look more than just a tree, and it needed to be more. There, I mean, there are apples in here that I've painted, which aren't actually apples. I believe they're pumpkins that I painted red. And a hive. Just anything that could make this tree look more than just a tree. But yeah, the Richards of the World High. And originally, again... I never got to do anything with this, and I had plans. I wanted to do stuff on the inside of this area. I wanted to do stuff inside of here, look. I mean, look at all the space we have in this. It's just the problem is when you have stuff like this, and it's at this level, 
you're going to get attacked by wyverns and arch wyverns all of the time. And it's just the worst, the worst thing. But yeah, I planned that ahead ready for a little bit of backstory, a bit of lore for the world, having a world tree, but also planning ahead for end days. I knew it was going to come in handy for end days. Now let's take a quick look at this. So this is something that's gone, undergone several changes. Now originally this is where I fought bosses. This is where I fought the Eye of Cthulhu and stuff like that when I need to do such. And then the second modification I made was I built this tower onto it here. And this was to allow me to farm wyverns. Uh, but it turns out it wasn't very good as a wyvern farm because nothing really showed up for any reason. Look, I get more wyverns when I'm just flying around, but for here for some reason they don't show up, which is strange. Uh, but then I converted this place into a challenge area. So for me to defeat the twins and the destroyer and stuff with pre-hard mode gear. So in order to do so, I set up this thing here, look, with healing and magic to restore me while I fought those. And then, I, you know, I beat them all apart from the twins because the twins are just ridiculously difficult for me. And then later on, I modified it again with this, which is my mushroom farm. Like, if I leave this turned on and then occasionally come back and flick the switches, it just rains mushrooms. And it works incredibly well. The only downside being all of the uh, vines that are covering this place. I don't think mushrooms grow if the vines are there. But speaking of growing stuff, one of my first, like, mini let's builds over here is the pumpkin farm. It's like one of my first uses of actuators with a purpose. I flick the lever and all the pumpkins come raining down. Like this. So I don't have to harvest them one by one. And I plant them again. And then I made it look like it has sprinklers with these rain clouds being in here. These beautiful rain clouds. Help them grow. And then of course the bottom layer uh, I miscalculated the height, so I can't have rain clouds here. It was a mess. What a mess. An emerald glass in the back. And cactus doors. Cactus doors. Also these uh, tall, towery things here, look. That I made to look like they're supporting this big thing. Oh yeah, and here are the... The things that I would do to make sure the statues pumped out hearts and... Stars and stuff every five seconds, so there's some luck. Look at this. Oh. I forgot I still had that wired up. Now, one of the more instrumental things I made was, of course, my elevator. There are several stops on the way down that we can pop in at. This, again, was built purely for um, endes. I decorated the altar itself, uh, negative paint, design it into fiery looking bricks, hellstone bricks, lava and stuff like that. It looks, it looks cool. It, I, I'm happy with that. It's one of my later builds. But again, it was for end days. And then our plantera farm, which really significantly helped us out. And then our Icor farm. This is another big let's build that I'm not happy with. I took shortcuts on this that still annoy me to this day. And that is, rather than building this all out, I just turned it corrupt. Which sucks, because if you zoom in, look, you see there are little patches of dirt in there. I really should have mined those out and replaced them. But I never did. And that shortcut cost me, and it it looks so ugly to me. But this is at my Icor farm. Also tend infinite lava farm. Uh, also a death weed farm. But I could sit here and things would die to lava. Oh, it's so good. Get so much eye call from that. Keep falling down. Uh, are there any more stops along the way? I don't think there are. Oh yes, our truffle worm farm. When we want to find truffle worms to fight Duke Fisher on. So again, this is a much later thing that we built. Added once the update came out. It was great for collecting these glowing mushrooms, but also 
find your truffle worms, which I'm not actually seeing any of right now. But yeah, they're, they're, they're tricky to catch because they like to run away. But also, this area has my favourite music in the game. My absolute favourite music. Alright, let's get out of here. We already have been here. Goodbye, Truffle Worm Farm. But we, we spent a long time catching stuff in there. And then this comes down to, originally, our safety pit. And we fly up, and then this is where we would plan to fight the Wall of Flesh a million trillion times. Of course, after that enough times, we don't need to. So we built this snowman with his stripy hat and his twiggle looking arms. Hey, it's a voodoo demon. Look at that snowman. Snowman down in hell with his scarf. He's got to keep warm. Uh, I don't think there's anything else down here we built. Oh, we built a little grinder over here for voodoo demons or something to collect voodoo dolls. I don't remember. Alright, let's go across. A rain is actually a nice looking thing for where we're going to be heading next. I think it looks better in the rain, if I'm going to be completely honest. But we're going to take a look at... Why do I keep doing that? We're going to take a look at something that I built that, again, might be one of my more proudest builds. But is also something that I planned ahead. And, again, was built with end days in mind. I've been planning end days for a long time, you guys. For a long time. Eventually we get over there. <laughs> oh, this roller coaster. I love this roller coaster. These railways. So good. So good. It saves us so much time. I mean, apart from the teleporters and whatnot. Is this about here? Where are we? Oh, perfect. Uh, our Tiki Village. And the only downside to this, I believe, is just how dark it is. It's just too difficult to see. The fact that in here there are giant Tiki heads, look. Designed to look exactly like their counterparts. The blue one. Like, I mean, look at their eye markings. And the, the hairstyle. And their eyes. They're all to match exactly how the... The old guys look, I mean, the downside here, you can't really see the red paint on diagonals on his face. And the other guy, the yellow guy is more visible. I think it's the one that you can see the most of. There we go across to the purple guy down here, hidden away. And of course the giant tiki totem. With a red that's barely, barely visible. But again, their ears look are all unique, all different. I'm really proud of this. I'm proud of a lot of my let's builds. I guess all of them. The the amount of time that I put in to making these things is ridiculous. Okay, what else we got? You know, might as well check over here. This is something that I really like the look of, but the more I built onto it, the less I liked it. And that is the High Noon Saloon. Here we go, look, there's a sign up here. It says High Noon Saloon. We've got a little uh, saloon doors look as you walk in. Got all these glasses and stuff behind the bar. There's an old piano and a stage. There's a well out back look and a balcony. I forgot, and there's a bathroom and stuff. And then upstairs there are kegs, which I believe some of these have stuff in. I'm not sure which ones, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Over the clock tower. And then... Ah, there we go. These are the ones. Look, they've got eggnog and sake... There's no ale in here. Oh, there we go. Ale. And that's it. And then this here was to change the colour of the water. To make it look like uh, blue water. Because it's in the desert, it wouldn't look blue. 
this all look brown? There's no one down here, look. This is all to change the looks of everything. But yeah, this is, uh, I was proud of it apart from the clock tower. So if I zoom in and look at the clock tower, it just looks, it's, it's not off center because it's in the center of the roof, but the roof has an overhang. So it makes it look off center. I really don't like it. I mean, I, I like my clock and the bell and stuff. But again, it's one of those problems, and it's a big problem with Terraria. When you get there, you can't see. Look, it's just black. It's completely black in the center of it, so you can't see the handles. Now, it's obvious. I know, I know why it works like this. It's just a shame that when it's something you built yourself, that it doesn't look as good. If I can go inside the clock tower and get a much better look with my light, but otherwise, me. And then this is the only piece of pixel art I've ever done. And that's because you guys were requesting pixel art for so long. And I, fi I told you guys I'm bad at pixel art. I said I'm horrible at it. I'll try my best. So I tried to do a skeleton. Skeleton? <laughs> a skeleton looking pixel art here. And uh, I'm really happy with its hands. Like, the face I had a bit of a thing to work with. Like, I know what Skeletron looks like, so I could kind of copy his... Well, not copy his face, but emulate his face. But his hands were completely from scratch. And I'm really happy with how his hands have gone. You can see his thumb, you can see his fingers, and there's, like, a depth to his fingers. Like, they're curling upwards, like he's holding things. The only issue I have is I wish his head was higher up above his hands. Uh, and then the other big issue. I remember his nose gave me a lot of issues. Uh, but the one problem is his teeth. <laughs> oh, look at the gap between his two front teeth. He is... I I just... I couldn't get his teeth to look good. Like, even at the bottom, he has, like, one giant fat tooth. That's, like, two blocks wide or three blocks wide or something there, look. But I tried my best with that. I'm really happy with it because that is actually with the other things. It's I, I always try my best, but I you should have something in mind, and it's nothing I ever build ever really lives up to how I picture it in my mind. But this, because it was based on something, I feel it looks close enough that I'm actually happy with how that looks. And then of course we can go across to our restaurant. Now this came across in two parts, so we have the actual restaurant here, which I, I I know what I'm going for. It doesn't look again some of those things that doesn't look as good as I thought it would in my head, and it also just happens to be very empty. It needs it needed a lot more decoration, if I'm honest. I I'm not a fan of how the building itself looks. And we've got the kitchen area and the. Uh, front of staff, front of service, I don't know what it's called. But other than the building, I love everything else about this area. Like you go out into the patio and you've got this nice uh, wall. It's not too tall, but it's like a fence wall. Fence wall? Is that a word? Well, all the diners get to sit. And then a lower level for more diners down here, which I really... I like that I didn't do stairs or anything like that. I like it was just... A drop down and there's a special, like a guest area or something like that. And then you come across the bridge and honestly this bridge looks a lot better than my restaurant if I'm honest. I love how this looks. I really do. So maybe here this bit looks a little bit off compared to this corner here. I think I can fix that. Here I go ruining things. Stop it. Leave me alone. Do you not see I'm trying to make this look nicer? No, I can't do it. It doesn't join as well as what it does on the side. But, you know, I like how this looks. And then you go along, like, another step further. What do you have? You have a small little snack shack run by a competitor out here, look. 
it's not a big restaurant. It's just a small place, and he's got his animals uh, ready to be killed and eaten. He's got his barrel full of animals, and then he's got the meat grinder right here. Look, to turn them into tacos or whatever. I know tacos aren't really an Asian-inspired food. But you know what? This is the world of Terraria. This is World 7 Pipeland. Maybe Asian tacos are a thing. But that that was that was this. If I if I, if I zoom out on the map, look. I hate the stand on the bridge under there. I hate how I've done that. Otherwise, I'm happy with that. Right, let's fly up and over. And we're going to head into our wizard's tower. Now, this build took a long time. Purely because the bricks that it's built out of are cobalt bricks. Which is an ore that you're supposed to use to make weapons and armor out of. You're not really supposed to decorate with it, let alone build an entire place out of it. But you know what? We we did this. We got a herb garden down here to grow all the plants that we need for recipes and potions. We got these like diabolist lanterns, which I believe was spelt wrong. Am I remembering correctly? Diablost. Yeah, they're spelt wrong. Diablost. Oops. Uh, they took ages to farm because you don't really see them very much. And then we've got all the different armor sets for the different stages and their different weapons. And you go up here to the rune wizards and their special magical weapons, which aren't really theirs, but whatever. A chest of nothing. And then we've got like a crystal ball and all this other stuff. And remember this roof? Well, maybe it doesn't look too good now. I don't know. Let's check the map. You know, yeah, I think the roof looks alright. I mean, even though the building itself looks very phallic, the uh, the roof and these hanging lanterns, which supposed to kind of symbolise the Diablos lanterns a little bit. I like it because it's like different types of wood in a like a crosshatch pattern. Oh yeah, then I even made clouds. Which I tried to make look natural. It look okay. And of course it's on its own floating island. Now originally what I planned to do and I never did. Was to underneath here look. Hollow out the bottom of all this dirt. And have like um, a giant crystal. So to place lots of like amethyst. Amethyst down to make it look floating on like a giant amethyst. But they don't work like that. Um, unfortunately, or at least they didn't work like that, so I couldn't do that. Which was sad, because that's something that I wanted to have done. Uh, where should we check out next? Where haven't we been and looked at? We've done all of that side. Let's go home. Uh, oh, our airship. Oh, man. Let's build an airship. One of my favourite Let's Build videos. Because this is one of those things where you really see how my brain works. And how it doesn't work. So, for example, I built the giant airship bubble blimp looking thing to carry it. And then I built the boat. And then the boat is like too big or it's off center or something. So it doesn't look right. With the blimpy bit, so I could have remade that, but then I put so much effort into it, I didn't want to have to redo it, I didn't want to shrink down the boat. And then the boat was awkward, like even the back, I spent so long trying to do the back of this boat have a nice curvature to it. But I'm, I'm happy in the fact that it's a ship that looks like a pirate ship, but it floats thanks to the blimp thing. But it still has oars. I, I was really, really happy with that. I really liked how this looked. Because there are, there are chains and things that they can hang from. The blimp is filled with spikes because they looked good, like strapping. Uh, you got inside the building, it's like captain's quarters look. All of our ability to fly, all the different wing variations. In here we've got uh, cannonballs. Cannonballs, yeah, and a pirate's outfit, captain's outfit. We've got all these cannons. And uh, they do work, like there's one... I should fall out. I didn't even know I could fit through that. I can't fit through that. Um, got a cannon here that we could fire. We can even change its angle somehow, but I don't remember. 
whatever. And then out the back of this, we've got the propellers. But another reason I really, really like this let's build, because it was, even though it's a let's build, I still managed to put in a funny edit when our poor, poor wizard. Oh, excuse me. I'm sneezing my brains out. Our poor, poor wizard, Gwentor, died while we were building this. And I don't know how he died. There, There is no reason for him to have died. The characters don't die of old age or anything like that. But he would have been safe inside his house here. Literally where Geroid is, he would have been safe. So that is actually the origin story of why we call Walter a murderer. Because Walter, we believe, killed Gwentor. Also before that, Walter had been acting very threatening towards us. Like, I'd built up this story of Walter being scary, uh, as being someone you don't want to mess with. But then Gwentor dying in the middle of the let's build, for no reason, while stood next to Walter, it, it just makes sense. It just makes so much sense that it would be Walter. Uh, where else? What have we done? What have we done? Oh, Truffle House. Yes. Now, originally, I had a lot of trouble moving the truffle into a house. Like, he lived here originally in, like, a green block. And I couldn't get him to move in for the longest time. And then eventually, I came back and I made him a, a house that looks more like a house he should live in. He lives inside a mushroom look. Old Porcini. He wasn't called Porcini then. I think he was Shiitake. I think he may have died somehow. But we made him this nice little mushroom house. It looks like he's a parasite living inside this. But then we also made him... Uh, oh, this is tr Truffle Station. Yeah, with our teleport pads to different places. And it was also serving as a nice little mushroom pad for harvesting mushrooms before. The Truffle Farm. Yes. I do remember. Oh, and then the nice little cabin out in the woods. Let's go check that out. So this place I originally built... For a reason. What did I build this for? I remember what I built this for. I built this as a bait and switch for episode 300. So episode 300, uh, I was like, I remember saying, oh, we're not going to do anything special. We're just going to go and camp and spend a little bit of time in our cabin out on the lake, out in the swamp jungle area. And we're going to reside here. And I was all, you know, we're not going to do anything else. And then I'm like, oh, what's this over here? What is this? Could it be a giant robotic hand and a giant robotic arm? And the trick was, have we built a robot? Was there, let's build this giant robot. Uh, it has since been disarmed, but originally, uh, upon approaching it, it would explode. The entire arm would explode and you would end up inside the robot's arm here. And... Uh, fall down. I think the explosives are still there, actually. Yeah, there's the explosives right here. Um, you'd fall down into this arm and think, oh, where does this go? Where does this go? And then you've got this bush in your way, and you, you dig out all the bush, and you end up falling here into our hidden Aztec temple, which was the next part of End Days. This is the next thing that led into End Days right here. And this, honestly, I was, I, I say this about a lot of things, but this is honestly one of my most proudest Let's Builds. There's so many good things I, I put to UC. For example, uh, the column here was exactly replicated here. However, the top of it is missing because it has fallen off and you can see it's rotated 90 degrees and landed here, look. You can also see how it is smashed through the wooden rope bridge and now it looks like the rope bridge is hanging down compared to over here. So over here, look, you have the, the complete rope bridge and then the top of the tower up here, look. So it has fallen off and landed in this. Which I'm, I'm really, I was really proud of that. And that took a long time to just rotate 
because it's not something you just rotate, you have to build it from scratch. But doing it in my mind was so difficult. And then we have the actual the Aztec Temple. Which maybe we'll talk more about we might talk more about this later. Cause there's still stuff to do with this. Um But if we go across here here and we fly across the neck I went too far. The next let's build thing that I want to show you was it was a way for me to generate infinite water, infinite lava, and infinite honey. Or at least that was my intention and I never got around to doing that. So now it's just giant, just giant storage for lava, honey, and water. But I like the way it looks, so I've never really wanted to go back and mess with it. And that is these here, look, these like rupee looking things. So yeah, they they should be able to generate it. They're all wired up with pumps and stuff. They should be able to generate it. But I really look at these. If I zoom in on the map, look, these little rupees. And then this area here was my obsidian generator, which would 100% work perfectly if I hadn't messed up. You see, lava should be on this side. Water should be on this side. That is the only mistake I made, is I put them on the wrong sides. And it still works, it's just not as efficient as what it could be. And then... Let's see, what else? Is there anything else hanging around that I've built that's worth talking about? Anything underground that I might have missed? We modified our dungeon, of course, but... No, so I guess the last thing to talk about is... The... Oh, not actually the last thing, but one of the next things to talk about is what really kicked off End Days. And I can't seem to find it. Wait, are we not there yet? Yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm being silly. It's here. Uh, the next thing is up here, which is the giant... Alien spaceship, the officially the biggest thing I've ever built. Even though Yggdrasil is taller, only just taller. It's only just taller. This is so wide, and there's the 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 depths of uh, stuff I had to do for this, including the, the the piping system, making it look right, having the engine in the center, which for some reason the lava has disappeared from part of it. I don't know why. Uh, these DNA looking cell things that have crystals in luck. These spikes that hang off that are all different colors. These tanks of corruption that rain down corruption with the piping system. The smoke at the top which is now being destroyed by arch wyverns, wyverns and harpies. And just look at this, you can't even fit a portion of it on my screen. It is so big and it took so long. And the worst part about this, honestly, is when my PC broke. You may remember my PC breaking? Uh, completely at flat out breaking, which is why I had to build a new one. Um, and all of the footage that I had recorded of me building this was completely lost. My let's build that I had been recording and editing was all gone. So I couldn't show you any of this. And it, it saddens me greatly to this day that I couldn't show you the let's build. The amount of redos that I did. None of this looked how it originally did. These tanks were originally rectangular. The uh, spaceship was originally a triangle shape. Until I made it look like... Um, like, if you remove these square sections off of it, see the weird shape it is? I designed it by doing one giant circle, then having two smaller circles intersect, and then removing those to give it that smoother shape. And then building the squares on the outside, that, and the tanks, and then... Ah, oh, it's... I was so proud of this. But I still am. And then filling it with water took a million years. Oh my god, it took forever. And then these circles, 
I had to build it in after I did the water. Otherwise, if I built them first, I would have to add water to each one individually, which would take a million years. But it's it's something that I'm I am proud of. So I guess that brings us to our very final let's build that we should take a look at. And it's one of the ones that has given me the most editing to do overall. Uh, one of the ones that has given me the most interaction with you guys. And that is the Sanctum that I built for Endes. And the Beast... And all these riddles, I had to design these riddles from scratch and make them match the things that I'd been building in the world ahead of time. Like I say, the, the, the pyramid and stuff, everything I'd planned ahead for end days, I had to make the riddles match. Now, originally these were going to be spoken riddles, but I changed them to, like, pictographic riddles. Because I, I figured it would work better rather than just having, like, signs and stuff like that. This is. It was a, it was a big build, a big big build that I came back and I edited a lot of stuff on. And uh, one of the most annoying parts actually was having it not appear on the map for so long, because you can see that it's here. So every time I would look at my map and pan across, I had to edit it out because I didn't want you guys to know it was here. I had to black put blackness over it so you couldn't see so as I'm like panning across you don't notice it and then when I'm like oh we'll just dig down here and it looks like I've never been here before because it's unexplored that was a big big thing but I think you know this has been a nice walk down memory lane we've had a look at all the stuff that we've done and let me just say, even though this is the final episode of Terraria, 1.2.4, this is the final episode of this series of Terraria, we are going to come back to this world one more time. We're going to come back to this world in the final episode of End Days, where we take the Mirror Diamond, we do whatever we're going to do with it over here. And maybe we can finally get rid of the spaceship. And maybe one final secret, one final secret that I've hidden away for so long in the Aztec Temple will be revealed. For now though, it's goodbye. And goodbye to the longest running series on my channel 650 episodes across four or five years i don't even know it's been it's been fun it's been miserable i've had adventures i've had misadventures i spent a lot of time here and i've enjoyed a lot of it but not all of it but yeah this is actually the end and of course what better way to end the episode than with rain a very thematic ending so that leaves me to say goodbye to you guys and good of course the rain ends now that I'm saying goodbye I just said how thematic it was I shouldn't open my mouth every time I say something I proved wrong in every game that I play <sighs> goodbye Terraria I'm not going to miss you. Maybe that was a little bit harsh. Uh, but yeah. Goodbye, Terraria, and goodbye to you guys. <laughs>